Hi everyone, my name is Fernando Jimenez, I work for Igalia and I'm going to talk about WP WebKit 400. This is the first time that I attend a contributors meeting and I'm really excited to have the opportunity to share with all of you the work that we've been doing inside Igalia around WP 100. So given the expertise of uh, the audience, I bet most of you already know what the WP WebKit is. But just in case we have someone new to the project, uh, allow me to take a few seconds to set the proper foundation for the rest uh, of the talk. So WP is the reference WebKit port for embedded and low consumption computer devices. Uh, it has been designed from the ground up with performance, small footprint, accelerated content rendering and simplicity of deployment in mind. Igalia is the author and primary maintainer of the WP WebKit port and we have a strong team of engineers working steadily on improving WP WebKit and trying new exciting ideas like the one that I'm about to share with you. So back in 2017, my colleague Jan Loversek uh, implemented a WP WebKit backend for Android and its Java and JNI layers uh, associated to it uh, on top to the point that he managed to get rendering and basic input to work. I wasn't really there when the decision about uh, investing on a WP port for Android was made, but I'm very happy that uh, this happened, uh, as I see a lot of value in this work. For example, uh, apart from the obvious benefits of uh, contributing to a more diverse uh, web engine ecosystem, it gives us a great opportunity to test and uh, benchmark WebKit itself against other engines that are especially tuned and optimized for Android, like Chromium. Uh, it also opens the door to experiment with uh, new web APIs that are uh, landing or have uh, recently landed uh, in WebKit, like the WebXR API that it's designed for devices where Android is uh, widely supported. So after Jean worked on the initial bits of the project, the investment was internally paused uh, until the beginning of this year when I joined Igalia and continued uh, his work. So I spent the first uh, half of the year trying to make it uh, more usable thanks to Servero and a web view based uh, API. And before diving into the details of the implementation itself, I would like to show how it currently looks so you get an idea of uh, what uh, we've been working on. So in the video on the left of, of the screen, you can see how WP Android runs on a mobile phone. We have all the basic pieces to be able to create a functional multi-tap bro uh, browser with progress report, navigation controls, uh, a basic uh, uh, AME support, uh, rotation, uh, etc. Uh, we also have preliminary support for multimedia playback. We are already able to play audio and video. However, all the work is currently done by software decoders, so the performance and the battery life are not uh, the best yet. But we have plans to work on enabling hardware acceleration decoding to improve the experience uh, as soon as possible. And as you can see, support is not limited to mobile phones. So thanks to the wide range of uh, architectures and devices that Android supports, we can now run WP on an even wider set of devices, like a, a pair of virtual reality glasses, for example. So in the video on the right, uh, you can see a prototype of Firefox reality using WP view from WP Android instead of uh, its usual Gecko view engine. And now let's talk about the components that uh, make WP400. So WP400 has more than 90 libraries, library dependencies and cross-compiling all of them is quite some work that uh, can get a little bit cumbersome when you have to do it uh, manually. So in order to ease the development process, I focused my first weeks of work on setting up uh, a more usable build system. So we decided to use uh, Servero, which is uh, GStreamer's cross-compilation build system. And lucky for us, Servero uh, was already able to cross-compile many of the dependencies that we had for WP WebKit. So I only had to uh, write the recipes for the remaining dependencies and integrated it um, into WP Android build system. 
And now uh, building everything requires a single command that fetches the entire internet and probably melts your CPU down, but that effectively builds and installs all the required uh, dependencies. We have a few patches that we need to apply to WebKit during the build, and some of them should be eventually contributed uh, upstream to WebKit, although others are simple uh, temporary hacks to do things like uh, disabling uh, PSON, which is unfortunately currently required in, Android, in WP for Android. Um, we're also expect, expecting to eventually contribute the changes that we made to Servero to GStreamer uh, because it will be useful not only for WP for Android but also for consumers of the GST WP web uh, plugin. Uh, the next piece of the puzzle is the WP View API. And this API uh, wraps uh, the WP WebKit browser in a reusable Android API and it serves a similar purpose to Android's built-in web view. It tries to mimic um, its API and it aims to be an easy-to-use drop-in replacement with uh, the possibility of extending its functionality in the future if that's uh, required. And this API is uh, pretty minimal for now. It exposes methods to load uh, URLs, navigate and get information about the load status and content uh, such as the title or the URL. And the plan is to add more methods to the API as we evolve uh, WP400. So setting up WP view in your Android applica application is uh, fairly simple. Uh, it requires mostly uh, adding the WP view widget to your activity layout and variating your um, activity implementation to make use of the API. For example, to load um, an URL, like you can see on the snippet on, uh, on the screen. And as uh, you probably know, WebKit uses a multi-process model that uh, ensures responsiveness and tries to improve security in cases uh, where the user loads a web page that um, infinite loops or otherwise hangs or tries to do nasty things. And web pages are loading in its own web process while multiple web processes share a common network process that um, is responsible for storage and network uh, access. But given that Android uh, forbids the fork system call uh, on non-rooted devices, we cannot really directly span these uh, child processes. Uh, and instead, uh, what we do is we use Android services to host uh, the logic of WebKit's uh, auxiliary process. Uh, so the life cycle of uh, WebKit's, uh, of these WebKit uh, auxiliary processes is still managed by WebKit. Uh, and the Android layer uh, only acts uh, as a proxy uh, of the requests coming from WebKit to spawn and terminate uh, these services. And in addition to the multi-process architecture, modern WebKit versions introduce the Python model, which stands for process swap on navigation. And this model aims to improve the security by creating an independent web process per each security uh, origin. And this is currently disabled on WP Android, although we have uh, partial support uh, in place that we will hopefully uh, extend uh, very soon. Um, the central piece of WP Android is uh, the browser top level single singleton object. Um, this is somehow, somehow equivalent to WebKit's uh, UI process, which, among other things, uh, manages the creation and destruction of uh, page uh, instances. Uh, it funnels uh, WP view API calls to the appropriate, appropriate page uh, instance. It also manages uh, the Android services that I mentioned before that are equivalent to uh, the web and the network processes and it hosts the thread where the WebKit web context uh, instance lives and where the main loop is run. On the other side, uh, a page roughly corresponds to a tab in a regular browser UI. So there's a one-to-one -one relationship between WP view and page. 
and each page instance has its own view and its own uh, web, key, web view uh, instance associated to it. Then the common interface between uh, WP WebKit and its rendering backend is provided by, by libwp. And WP backend Android is uh, our Android imp uh, oriented implementation of this libwp uh, API, uh, which essentially bridges uh, the gap be between the WebKit architecture and the internal composition structure on one side and the Android system on the other side. And finally, for the graphics part, uh, we recently recently improved the rendering pipeline, moving uh, to a model where we make uh, WP backend Android generate Android native uh, hardware buffers that um, are handled by uh, adaptable renderers on the Java side. And in this model, we try to avoid uh, uh, copies, buffer copies and blitz uh, uh, as much uh, as possible, improving the rendering uh, performance. Uh, so for every exported uh, native hardware buffer, the buffer gets uh, resampled uh, via IGL into the native window that uh, is uh, associated with a surface uh, of an Android uh, surface view. We still keep the previous model as a fallback for platforms where native hardware, hardware buffers are not uh, avail available like uh, any platform that, uh, mm, that hasn't support only for the Android API level uh, 26 which is uh, Android Oreo. And there's still a lot of work to do. So, for example, as mentioned at uh, the beginning of the talk, we have plans to add uh, hardware acceleration support to for video playback. Um, we also want to support the PSON model as soon as possible. Uh, that is a very important piece uh, at the moment because, for uh, for example, we don't have a way to spawn new web processes that Android uh, when Android decides to kill one of the background services that uh, we use to implement the web process functionality. So when that happens, the functionality is completely gone and we have no way to recover the, uh, from it. And unfortunately, the cases where Android kills these services, it's um, too common uh, in order to avoid out of memory situations. We only uh, currently support ARM64 uh, but we need to support ARM v7 and x86 if we want to cover as much Android devices as possible. Emulator support is also pending. There are currently some EGL emul emulation issues that we need to investigate in order to fix that. Uh, also, packaging and distribution is something that we need to look into. We are currently able to generate APKs for the mini browser uh, application, but at some point we need to generate some sort of this digital uh, AR package for Android developers to use um, our WP View API in a more familiar way for Android developers. Uh, we also need to spend some time on performance and stability improvements. So, for example, uh, pinch to zoom uh, does not currently perform as good as we liked and we observed uh, eventual crashes and hangs that uh, we'll still need to investigate. And basically there's a big list of uh, issues and pending tasks uh, that you can check on the main repo, repo uh, at GitHub. And I also encourage you to give it a try. We generated an APK for people to test uh, and we uploaded it to that URL that you can see on the screen. There's also this QR code that you can scan to get uh, the URL easily. And if you want, you can also look into the main repo about how to build the entire set of dependencies along with the Java and the JNI layer, just in case you want to hack uh, on WP WebKit for Android itself. And that's everything. Thank you very much uh, for listening. And if you happen to have uh, any question, I will be happy to answer it 
uh, right now or maybe uh, by email you can write me uh, a line uh, to that uh, email uh, that you can see on the screen and I will happily uh, answer your questions if I can. Thank you very much.